Welcome back to another edition of Grizz Talk. I'm joined here by men's basketball coach Greg Campy. Greg, thanks for joining us again. Just to kick off the program today, you know, those summer league teams are just not making it easy for you to hit number 500. <laughs> that is, that, that's the farthest thing from my process. I couldn't even tell you how many we need to go to get there. I mean, we needed 10 at the beginning of the year, so 7 minus 10 is 3, so I guess 3 more. The fans will be counting. That's the farthest thing. Uh, having played some of the best teams already in the conference, would you would you say that North Dakota State is the best team thus far? Record certainly indicates it. Having played them, South Dakota State, Western Illinois, would you say that? I would say that those three teams are very good. I would say that any of the three could beat each other. I, would, I think three to four losses is going to win the league. And uh, I don't think I can say this team's better. Uh, North Dakota State lost a great player this, in that game. You know, he's going to be out for four to six weeks. I'm sure that's going to affect them. Uh, see what they do with their, with their depth and what that means. You know, we, we lost the, player, the preseason player of the year in our conference a few years ago with that same injury. And uh, he, he had a hard time returning from it. Talking about Derek Nelson. Yeah, Derek Nelson. And then uh, Oral Roberts lost Ken Tut in his senior season with that same injury. And he came back in, I think, seven weeks and actually made the game-winning shot to beat us in the championship game of the tournament. So, you know, that we've seen that injury before in this league. And it's kind of funny because we were talking a couple weeks ago and somebody on our staff we were talking about, and I said maybe an injury is going to determine what happens you know, in this in this league race, just because I think the top four teams are all not real deep. Um, I don't think Western Illinois can afford to lose anybody. I don't think South Dakota State can afford to lose anybody. I don't think North Dakota State can afford to lose anybody. And I didn't think Oakland could afford to lose anybody in that top five or six. So we'll see if I was right or not now on what they do. Now, uh, they've still got to go to Western Illinois. They've still got to go to Oakland. They've still got to go to Fort Wayne. They've still got to go to to uh, South Dakota State, you know, so they've got some tough games in front of them that they'll have to play without that young man. Now you've been through the uh, the rigors of the Summit League season before, and uh, you weren't, you know, before we talked ahead of the Dakota trip, you weren't, you know, putting it all on that trip. You said, if you come back, if you lose on the road, we're not done. We're just in a uh, harder and, position. Right, and the reason for that is because I don't, this is this year's different than the last four or five years in this league. The last, the last four or five years in this league, there has been a dominant team. And, you know, one, the last three years, there's only been one loss. Uh, I think before that, it was two. And so, you know, this year, there are, I believe, there are four teams that, uh, that can run the table, that could, you know, that could do, that could win the championship. And, um, and then I think you throw Fort Wayne in there. I think Fort Wayne is going to beat some people at home. I, I, you know, they've struggled on the road, but they've got a great player, and a great player in, in that environment can always win a home game. So, you know, it's going to be tough. I, I really think I think three wins it. You might even get a tie with four. I'm not sure about that, but I think three wins it. Speaking about the league uh, and scheduling, as a coach, um, I've gotten opinions from fans and fellow media. What, as a coach, does the mirror scheduling affect you? I, that has no effect on me. I mean, that, that, that's the league. That's, uh, you know, I'd like to watch our women play. Uh, but they always play before us, and I don't get to watch much of it anyway. So, um, you know, I, I, you would have to talk to the women's coaches to see if they like that or not. That, that has no effect on us. I, I'm sure that our guys at work don't like having to be here every Saturday and every Thursday because, you know, with mere scheduling, there's always knock them out, right. both out on Saturday. there's always a home game every Thursday and every Saturday. It's either women or the men. Where if, if it was like scheduling, then you'd have an off week. You know, so I don't know how they feel about it. You'd have to ask them. Honestly, it has no consequence on me, my job, or our, our basketball team. I don't. I've never even asked our women's coach if she likes it. I've not asked our AD if he likes it. I, I, Speaking of playing games here at the Old Arena, you guys have four of them coming up consecutive. Yeah. about as many as you play total. It is as many as we play total, <laughs> yes. Uh, I, we're excited about that. We play six of the next seven. Uh, we, don't, we don't travel, we don't miss class now for 
five weeks because our, our one road game is a Saturday game at Omaha. I think our plane leaves after class that day. So we get to be here for five weeks without missing class. And, you know, it, this is this is the uh, golden parachute of the, of the schedule. You know, it's been very, very difficult, but this is the time. And now we've got to make a run. I mean, if we want to win a championship, it's, it's still in our grasp. But we have to win. We have to get a long win streak going. And, and you know, we've played, we've played the top three teams in the league on the road. We've played at Western, at the Dakotas. So North Dakota State has to go to Oakland, they have to go to Western, they have to go to South Dakota State. South Dakota State has to go to Oakland, they have to go to Western Illinois. Western Illinois has to go to Oakland, they have to go to South Dakota State, they have to go to North Dakota State. They have, Western has four games left just with those two teams. So, you know, we're sitting where we have the bottom of the league on the road, the top of the league at home, and, and all seven of our eight games at home still. So it's there for us. I mean, it's, it's not. It's got to reach out to right, right, it's there for us. We just got to, if we're good enough, we can do it. And that's the question. Are we good enough? We're going to find out. Do you like the way the team has responded since the game at Alabama? Well, the Alabama game, was, as we talked before, was kind of a, meaningless game other than you've got a chance to play on national TV, you're playing a BCS school, and you're playing basketball. You're, you're 18 to 22 years old, you get to play a game you love, and you know, I haven't got to play a game in 50 years, you know, in a long time, in 30-some years. Well, you just play it differently on the sidelines. You well, play it but, more in your mind. Right, it's... but they got to understand the day once it's over, they don't get to play again, you know. I mean, the majority of them, a couple of them will play overseas or even a couple, you know, one or two might have a chance in the NBA, but um, it's over. So you better come to play every day, and it, it goes fast. And I mean, we're 19 games into this already, and so it, it goes fast. So. Yeah, I was scrolling through the website yesterday, looking at games, and I was closer to the bottom, and I was at the top, and that was a strange feeling. Yeah, it really. And for us, it doesn't even seem like the season started because we haven't been at all. You know, we said we've got this big long road thing in front of us. Now let's grind through and get through it, and then. You know, the rewards are there for you, and now that we're through that, it's like the season's going to burst onto the, you know, now. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, that was a pretty long exhibition. Yeah. Yeah. And a tiring. Um, talking a little bit more, going back to that injury to Derek Nelson, some of the increases in play here goes down. How, and, you know, I'm just trying to compare that to uh, Bethany Waterworth, the women's team announced that she's going to miss this season. What was that like for you as a coach going through, knowing that you're most likely your best play was going to be on the sideline for the season? Well, you felt sorry for yourself the day it happened. And then you went and sat down in your office and you figured, tried to figure out what the hell you're going to do and how you can fix it. And then you, the competitive juices in you uh, get you going and get you ready. You know, we ended up losing uh, on a last second shot in the championship game of the league tournament that year without it. And we had a double-digit lead with eight minutes to seven minutes to go in the game. So, you know, maybe we could have won that. Maybe it was my fault we didn't finish that game. So, you know, you just the next man up. I mean, it says Oakland on your jersey. And it's just the next. You have to have that mentality that when somebody gets hurt, it's the next person up. For for North Dakota State, somebody over there's got to step up. And. Uh, and that's, I'm sure that's what Coach Phillips is, is trying to talk to his team about today. Is you just got to, you, we recruited you. You're on scholarship. You're here. You need to play. You know, and that, that's how we went about it. Did I feel bad when it happened? Yeah, I felt bad for the kid. I felt bad for me. I felt bad for Oakland. I felt bad for me. I felt bad for my president, for the AD. And did I say I felt bad for me? I did. I felt bad for me. It ended up working out the next year. Right. And, and I felt bad for 24 hours. And then we came to practice the next day, and we had to get ready, and we said, okay, this is our team. This is over. Um, speaking of a guy that could potentially one day be conference player of the year, Travis Bader, um, do you think he's reached a point where he's harder to, harder to guard or harder to stop? Because it seemed like earlier in the season in the non-conference schedule, there were teams the teams were really keying on him and taking him out. But now, even in the Alabama game, he seems to be able to find a way to score. Well, he, 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 they are doing that. And they're still doing that, and they're going to continue to do that until our other players step up. We're not shooting the ball well enough from the other positions. It's not Travis's fault. That's how he's going to get guarded, and he's running our sets, and we're doing all the stuff. And you know, 
it's those other players have got to shoot the ball a little bit better. Now, Ryan Bass is starting to come. Ryan Bass has elevated his game. Sure. And he's starting to, to, he's had three straight games of 15 or more points. Uh, he's shooting the ball. His field goal percentage has gone from, you know. As we watch him drain three. Uh, right. Yeah. But his field goal percent has gone from my batting average to, you know, I mean, he's at 40% from the three now. And, and we, where he was to get there means, boy, he's really been shooting. So that's really helped. Now, if Duke can start making a few shots and Valentine can get back and start making some shots, that's going to make Bader's life a lot easier. Petro scoring is going to make Bader's life a lot easier. That's how he's going to get guarded. He's going to get guarded that way all year. Oh, the, the rise in the past stats, that's, that's not so much a microwave as it is a regular conventional one, the way he's heated up. Yeah, he, well, again, we've changed his role, though. The, when he was going to be in the microwave, he was coming off the bench and, you know, instant offense. But now he's, he played 40 minutes in one of the games this weekend. I can't remember which one it was. I think it was the most recent. Yeah, he played 40 minutes. I never took him out of the game, which is the first time in his career he's ever played 40 minutes. And so he's, he's got to be a consistent, he's got to be a convection. <laughs> is that different than a regular oven? I think so. I know when I cook in my convection oven, it takes a lot less time. The slow cooker is also, it takes a while to get going, but when it does, it's hard to cool it off. Well, that's kind of been our season. We've been the slow cooker. Now we're ready to go. <laughs> um, we've got a couple readers submitted questions um, talking about uh, Bader Bass. And People Petros. read you? Really? I've well, got a few dedicated, ah, a few diehards. Congratulations. <laughs> So asking about Bader, Bass, and Petros with their numbers up lately, are you concerned at all with fatigue? Fatigue? Come on. I mean, they're 18 to 22 years old. We play twice a week. This isn't the NBA. <laughs> this isn't, we don't, I mean, it, and in the next month, we don't travel. We make one two-hour plane trip in the next five weeks. Fatigue shouldn't be an issue at all. If they're well-conditioned athletes that take care of their body, eat properly, use the weight room properly, they should all be able to play 40 minutes. I mean, the North Dakota State game, one of the reasons Bass didn't play 40 minutes, we had two half times. Yeah. We had a 15 minute because delay. delay. Yeah, we had a 15 minute delay at the Did end. Did all the lights time. go out or just no, the No, just the scoreboard. Okay. The scoreboard wouldn't work. The, the power went out, but the, they, I didn't quite understand it. But it's, I mean, it's, it's Fargo, North Dakota. What do you expect? Um, but we had two half times in that game. We got a media timeout every four minutes. You know, we're not playing at the pace we normally play at, too. You know, Jonathan Jones played 39 minutes a game for four years. I don't think he ever wore it out. I mean, if an 18 to 22 year old kid's going to wear out, then that's my fault because they're not conditioned properly. Uh, another reader submitted a question from Matt Duda, former drummer from the band. He, he was curious, are players developing as expected, as you have expected for them this year? Are players the developing? The freshmen going, turning into sophomores, are they coming along as you would hope? Well, freshmen, I, I mean, I, let's, let's go through it. Uh, Bader shot 90 free throws all last year. So the one thing about his game was he can't put it on the floor, get to the rim, get to the line. Well, he, we've only played 19 games, and he's over 100 free throws already. So he's got 10 more free throws than he had. We played 36 games last year. So he, he shot 90 free throws in 36 games, and he's shot 119 games this year. So is he developing that area we wanted him to? Sure, I, I would guess he is. Well, you, I'd have to believe people were looking at Corey Petro saying he's the man. Last year at this time, everybody wanted to get rid of him. You know, he started hot, and then he was not very good in the league. And everybody was like, why is he playing? Play the core. He came on know. at the end of last year. Yeah, yeah. Ryan Bass yeah, too. yeah. So, obviously, he's having a pretty good sophomore year. You know, Duke Monday, it's his first year playing with us. I don't, I don't know. I, I have nothing to compare him to say, are you developing? Um, who else? Drew Ryan, Valentine. Drew Valentine is hurt. I mean, is Drew Valentine having a good year? No. No, he's not. His numbers are just ridiculously low compared to what he's been. But my question for people is, you have no idea the pain he's in and what he's going through. And, I mean, he can't even jump off that leg, so that completely limits him on some of the things that he could do. Drew, Drew got his work done through a hard work ethic and through, uh, you know, grinding, and now he's in tremendous pain. He didn't even practice again today. He's not going to practice tomorrow. You know, we're just so you could say, why is he playing? Well, he's playing because he's Drew Valentine. He's earned the right to play, and he's
and he'd give me he'd give me his last ounce of blood if I asked for it, and he's given it. You know, so uh, has he developed? I mean, I think he's developed greatly over his career. He needs rest. Um, Ryan Bass is sleeping in his own bed for right. a few weeks. Yeah. I think Ryan Bass has developed probably more than any player on the team this year, and that he went from a role that we, uh, you know, said we tried to define a role for him, and uh, instead he's come through that role, and now he's a starter, and now he's had three straight 15 point games. His numbers are going up, his percentages are going up, his efficiency is going up. I think Bass has developed very, very well. Um, Okay, so is that the five starters? Yeah, so okay, the off the starters. bench, off the bench. Let's see, Raphael's in his first year here. Let's talk about Raphael. Raphael didn't get here until school had started. He, he, got missed, injured, he, missed, he, he missed the whole summer. He missed the weight training of the summer. He missed all the individual work of the summer. He missed, he gets here late. Then he, he has, he sprains a knee. Even though he ended up coming back in a week or so, he couldn't really practice and we couldn't do stuff with him. Then he gets healthy, then he gets sick, and he misses a couple games sick, and he misses practice. And now, you know, we're in the middle of the league, and I'm not going to develop him in the middle of the league. We're trying to win. So he's going to get sporadic moments. When he plays well, he's going to get more minutes. When he doesn't, he's not. So, yeah, he hasn't developed the way we'd like to, but there's been circumstances on that. Um, Dante Williams is an enigma to me. Dante Williams is a young man that's been given a lot of opportunities and just hasn't been able to get it done. I, why am I answering this question? That's kind of a stupid question. I, 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 you know, let's let's determine when the season's over how we've developed. You want to revisit that later? Yeah, you I put mean, a you, in that one? you know what? When the season's over, if we don't do what I think we're going to do, if this team doesn't win the way that Oakland's expected to win, and you want to ask me a question like that, come and ask me a question like that. But that it, it's freaking January developing. The whole team's developing. The whole season's developing. So. If, if at the end of the year a kid's had a bad year and not gotten better, then okay, that's on. We'll, we'll take a look at that. I'll own up to any of that stuff. But let's wait till the year's over. On a more lighthearted note, I know you're a big football fan. Who would you like to see in the Super Bowl? LSU. I'm sure they'll probably have a few players on someone's Super Bowl roster. Uh, I'm a Tom Brady fan, man. University of Michigan. Great quarterback. Were you a Tom Brady fan while he was at Michigan? No, I wanted, the, the I wanted, I wanted the Benjamin put Henson in there. Oh. But, but I think, well, at least you're I think, honest. I think Lloyd knew what he was doing, huh? I, is Henson how many Super Bowls has he won? Uh, he probably got tickets to the Super Bowl yeah. recently. So I, I remember that. I was so mad at Carr Lloyd. Come on, Lloyd, what are you doing? Well, I guess Lloyd knew what he was doing. All right, Coach. Well, uh, we'll let you get out of here. Do you have any more questions? Got a few more. Also, I can save these old because they're long term. We'll uh, certainly have another program coming up within, within the next few weeks. So, Coach Craig Campy, thanks for joining us today. I and we'll, uh, we'll get to see plenty of you and your team, six, six out of the next seven at home. And then just that brief trip to Omaha, is it? Right, there and back. Let me, let me revisit that one question because I don't want, I don't want somebody mad because I called them stupid. I didn't. It's not we a the question. Right, it's not a stupid question. It's a very good question. It's a question that should be asked to any coach, but it should be asked when the season's over and when the results are in, okay? That's like, we've got four precincts reporting on our season right now, you know? And we got the- Four out of uh, under? Yeah, well, right. And we've got, we've got, uh, well, there's, uh, if it's league games, there's 16 precincts and we've had five report. All right, let's wait till all 16 are in and let's wait to see what happens before you know, we declare that Dewey's the new president, right? I mean, he probably is too young to understand that, but are you too young to understand that? Um, I believe we still have, it was Dewey defeats Truman. I think right. we got one of the copies of the right. paper. Dewey Actually, defeats Truman Trum because... Certainly, it's probably a copy right. of another paper because the open press never would have. Right, no, for sure. <laughs> but that's my point is, you know, let, let's, let's wait till the season's over. And then we'll determine what kind of year it was. And like I said, I'll be responsible for any of that stuff. If players don't develop, that's fine, you know. Uh, I'll stand up and say, yeah, I did a crappy job, all right. But let's let's wait till we see what the results are. Great. And I, I didn't call your question stupid. The timing of it is, is not good. All right, Coach, uh, thanks for joining us today. We'll be joined soon by uh, Ryan Bass.